Okay. So the next paper is uh, interaction mix match synthesizing close interaction using conditional hierarchical events with multiple class embedding. Uh, and the authors are Aman Goa, uh, Shrinkwe Men, uh, Edmund Ho. So um, this is another online presentation. We have to speak here. Do we have a speaker? Yep. Please. Yeah, I'm here. Hi. I'll Are share you? my screen. All right. Um, please uh, get started whenever you're ready. Right. Hi, everyone. Uh, I, am Will, will be presenting the work Interaction Mix and Match Synthesizing Close Interactions Using Conditional, Hierarchical, yeah, and with Multi Hot Class Embedding. This is a joint effort with Shenhui Men and Edmund Asselho. So I introduce you the problem of human motion generation. It can mainly be divided into single human motion generation and multi-person interaction motion generation. There have been quite an amount of work on single human motion generation, but the literature in multi-human interaction synthesis remains quite unexplored. We address the more challenging problem of human multi-human interaction synthesis with a high degree of controllability. The challenge mainly comes from the large learning complexity in the spatial temporal close interactions. Multi-human interaction is quite difficult to capture due to occlusion, difficulty in alignment of two individually captured motions. Quite a bit of manual intervention is required. So on to the related work. So the latest work is by Men et al. in computer and graphics. So they propose the multi-human interaction model by taking the bodies of the leader pose and feeding it to their GAN networks. Prior to this, non-neural network-based methods such as by Huang et al., uh, maximum entropy inverse optimal control method or Zhang et al where they propose the problem as a dual agent problem and they use a kernel-based reinforcement learning method to generate the follower leader interactions. There has been work in prediction of multi-human interactions, but not synthesis. So Google et al. and CBPR 2022 proposed a cross-attention graph convolutional network for their new data set that they released, the extreme most Motion pose interaction and Mahesh Vari et al. introduced a conditional Gaussian VA to generate both single and multi human interactions from a given noise. So I'll come on to the research gap. So the previous works lacks high level of controllability of the interaction synthesized, and the synthesized human motions lack diversity. So to bridge this gap, we introduced the novel concept of multi-hot class embedding to give high level of controllability. This allows the user to generate the interactions as they see. I'll come to the contributions later. So what is interaction mix and match? So given the leader interaction, our method is able to generate follower reactions in the interaction as per the user's needs. So if a person is kicking in the leader, then we are able to generate the corresponding reaction of a person exchanging object or pushing or even a mix of this. So we call these kind of reactions as interaction mix. And we are also able to control the intensity of being kicked, which we call interaction match. So I'll move on to the framework and afterwards I can show some results. So the first the leader poses is divided into six parts in a hierarchical manner. And with the sixth part being the whole skeleton itself. Then there are two phases of class embedding concatenation during the training and during the inference. So during training, we just concatenate a one hot vector with the corresponding class level as per the data set. And during multi during the inference or generator phase, we are able to synthesize multi hot reactions by giving the corresponding uh, multi hot vector in concatenation with the whole skeleton. So, for say example, if you want to generate a reaction of hugging and shaking hands while 
preferring not to be kicked. So there's a minus one here. Then we concatenate this multi hot vector. So this is the input space. So after we have the six input features, we feed them to a bidirectional LSTM for our encoder architecture. And for our decoder architecture, we use a sequence of sequence attention. And the corresponding output is fed through a fully connected layer to generate the synthesized pose that we wish to do. Our, then the synthesized reaction goes through a discriminator where the discriminator is a two layer bidirectional LSTM fed to a fully connected layer, which predicts N plus one classes. So the N classes corresponds to the classes available in the data set and the N, N plus one class corresponds to the fake class or the generated class. Our model is capable of attending to interactions of variable length due to our sequence to sequence attention layer. So if we move on to the losses proposed, the stand, we have the discriminator loss of trying to predict whether it belongs to either of the N classes or the N plus one classes. We also adopt the continuity loss from which uh, essentially sees the pulse difference between T plus delta T and T minus T plus K delta T and T with a regularized term added to it. By tweaking the values of delta T, K, and lambda, we are able to ensure the random jitteriness of the synthesized motion to be lessened. And we also have a L1 loss with the ground truth and synthesized raw, synthesized reaction and a simple bone loss with the corresponding reference. So our objective is a min-max function of all these four laws with their corresponding weights. So we'll move on to quantitative results. So we showcase our results on two data sets, FU interaction data set and the 2C data set. So the FB interaction data set is a 3D skeleton video that base data set and the 2C data set is a 3D mocap based data set and we're able to achieve state of the art results across all the classes in both data sets. Now I would like to showcase some qualitative results. So on the left is the leader, the yellow post, and we're trying to generate the blue post, the person being punched. So as you can see that our our result resembles better with the ground truth as compared to the previous state of the art results, which was by men at all. And varying bone length issues can be found in previous results. Also, some unnatural foot sliding can be found in men at all, whereas ours is more natural, albeit there is a bit of foot sliding present. And the SBU data set, we are able to create a more smooth and reactive interaction as compared to the ground truth itself. So the ground truth can have some jitters because it is captured using a depth based sensor. So this is the applications of interaction mix. So for a person kicking, we are able to gener generate a reaction of the person being kicked while shaking hand and hugging. So to animate these kind of reactions would be very difficult because all the spatial temporal components that would need to be taken into effect. So with our novel multi-hot class embedding, we are able to take care of it at a high level. So we can combine different actions as we see fit. Also, we're able to vary the intensity of being kicked. So that adds to the diversity of the reaction. So we can mix as well as match, hence interaction mix, mix and match. We do some latent space analysis on the embedding generated by 
the encoder of our framework. And we were able to see that the generated sequences lies in a nice cluster as corresponding to the classes. We hypothesized that this made latent space and allows us to mix and match the reactions more smoothly. We also did the same TSME latent space analysis on men et al. And we couldn't find any uh, clear clustering of the action sequences generated. Ablation study. So for the 2C data set, we ablated across the discriminator and all the losses as well as the multi hot embedding. And we found that the result with the proposed framework works out the best. Similarly for SBU data set, we found that the results without the bone loss loss uh, turns out to be the best with the second best being our proposed framework. Mm -hmm. We see that the ground truth in the SBU data set can have some jittering and bone length issues. So even though the quantitative results might not be the best with all the proposed framework, the qualitatively it speaks for itself. Thank you for watching. Uh, our code is publicly available at this link and this is our team. Please feel free to ask any questions as you see fit. Okay, thanks a lot for the presentation. Um, do we have any questions? Can I ask a question again? Sorry. Um, so thank you very much for the presentation. Um, so uh, it's very interesting that you can mix up uh, different interactions. I'm just wondering right. uh, when you mix up, say for example, kicking and hugging and shaking hands and whatever, how do you make sure that the resultant motion is in uh, high quality and it is contextually correct? So we, refer to our users to the latent space for mixing their interactions. So we suppose that similar reactions can be mixed efficiently. And if you say mix shaking hand with pushing, then the appropriate results won't be as high quality and may result in some kind of foot sliding or penetration issues. So we do not uh, enforce a hard limit on the user for mixing. They can refer to the latent space for mixing or just see the qualitative results. Thank you. So I have a question. Um, can you uh, explain a bit more the motivation for splitting the character into multiple parts? Right, no worries. Is this the part you're asking? Right. So across a uh, time duration T of an interaction, so each time duration will have a pose. So in our hierarchical framework, we divide it into six subparts, say the arm, the torso, the legs, and as well as the whole skeleton, which is just the po all the poses itself. And each uh, subpart is fed through a linear layer. The whole skeleton is concatenated with the class embedding. So this is done in two parts, during the training phase and during the inference phase. So during the training phase, it acts as a normal conditional network with a one hot vector concatenated on top of it. And during the inference or the generation phase, we can specify which class to generate or which class to not generate. So for example, if we wanna generate a reaction of hugging and shaking hands, well, not being kicked, then we can uh, feed forward this class embedding. And this is how the multi hot class embedding is able to generate these reactions. Um. So I have another question. In your training set, did you have any of these like multi-class interactions where the character was doing kind of multiple things? No, not at all. So all of the training set would just comprise of one action. 
per sequence or in crash. Yeah, I, I think it would be interesting to compare this to some sort of ground truth or, or something where you've captured so no, something that encodes multiple reactions. So yeah, that right. Definitely. Oh, um, any other questions? All right, then let's thank the speaker one more time.